Uh, hello there, welcome to this uh, presentation. We're going to look at the electricity supply transformer um, and how electricity is produced from the power station through the network and how it enters a building um, or premises for the commercial side. So we'll start off looking at the grid, the role of the substation, delta, star, and we'll do a couple of worked examples. So if we look at the uh, actual layout of the grid, the national grid effectively um, is was devised to put a, literally a grid over the country and connect power stations into the grid throughout the country to form a uniform supply throughout. And that means that we can service uh, power stations. So because all the power stations, uh, and wind farms and solar farms are all interconnected now, it means that we can shut down when there's no demand, undertake maintenance and keep the grid active. As opposed to having a local power station, if anything happens to that local power station in your town and the power station fails, then the power's going to go off. So they came up with the idea of effectively putting a grid over the entire country um, and obviously creating a uniform supply, hence the term grid. So what is where does it start? Well, effectively, if we look over on this side here, so if we look in the top left, so I'll, I'll just back up here. So on number one, so up in this corner here, what happens here is is the generator or alternator is driven usually by steam on a large scale power station and uh, years ago we used to use coal to create steam um, we use nuclear power now mostly but the main thing is we need a mechanical input that's called the prime mover so steam is one of them hydro water wind anything where we can create mechanical energy into electrical energy so we put a mechanical energy into uh, an alternator the alternator rotates and that generates three phases and red yellow blue or brown black gray as they are now and they're generated at a high voltage so round about between 15 uh, and 25 kilovolt so at this point here we've got uh, 50, 25 kilovolt max on average and the reason why we generate it at a very high voltage is because of high power levels it keeps the current down so that means that the current flowing in the windings of the alternator is significantly smaller so that means that the losses are effectively a lot less so it's running a lot cooler once we've generated 25 kilovolt we go into a transformer similar for a transformer uh, just uh, is is basically so the symbol for a transformer is a circle, two circles in with each other like so. So we go from 20, 23 or 25 kilovolt on average uh, into our step down, uh, sorry, step up transformer. So we're going 25 kilovolt in. And then what we do is we're going right across the country. So this is a generation voltage, 25 kilovolt. We're going to go onto a transmission voltage which is much higher so 400 kilovolt so the 400 kilovolt line pushes it right across the country and the current is quite small here so we've got a very very high voltage but the current is incredibly small and if you remember the power losses in cables i squared r so the more power sorry the more current that flows in a cable or a conductor the more power loss we're going to get in there as heat so if we can keep the current down, then obviously we can keep the power loss down. So otherwise, if we didn't use a high voltage, then the conductors with the amount of power that they are transmitting would be glowing red. So probably melt, actually, and the current would be incredibly high. So high voltage is used to keep the I squared R losses down. And that goes across the country. And then throughout it, what we call intermediate substations, um, we then start to distribute the, the electricity. So 
so you'll have a, a step up transformer uh, sorry moving on to this side here so if we look on the, the top right so wind farms so these are at sea or up in the hills these are getting quite uh, obviously quite popular now uh, around the United Kingdom if, if, if not most of the planet to be fair and a, a wind farm will again produce high voltage into a step up transformer and that will also feed into the grid so we can use different forms of creating electricity but they're all connected through transformers known as substations and another thing that a transformer offers is isolation so because the windings of a transformer are not electrically connected it means that actually each power station or wind farm is electrically isolated from each other and it's only connected through the linkage of a transformer plus linkage because obviously you've got the two windings of a transformer uh, so if you don't know what I'm talking about with transformers then it might be an idea to brush up on your transformer theory so when we come towards a city or a, an area it could be a factory an industrial estate it doesn't have to be a city but anywhere where we want to use it then the the, the voltage will be stepped down so probably to about 132 kilovolt so it starts to come down um, and it comes into a switch network so in this so in this photograph here in the middle you might see these on the outskirts of your of where you live um, you've got switches in here you've got circuit breakers in here um, transformers and this is gives the engineers a facility to isolate sections if there's a fault undertake maintenance and so on and from here it will split over possibly into 11 kilovolt uh, to go or, or 33 kilovolts it could be anywhere between 33 and 11 kilovolt so it does vary it depends on the load type the distance so these figures are kind of average figures and what you might find in the country is you'll see these overhead live wires these pylons going to farms and that little box on the end of a pole well that's a transformer and that converts your 11 kilovolt down into your 230 400 and it's this one here so these transformers here that I'm circling uh, these are the ones that I'm going to talk about not so much that one I'll come back to the, the bottom one there let me just come back to that one so this one here large industry to keep again to keep everything running uh, efficient because it, like heavy industry and it could be a shopping center as well it could be a large hospital uh, and a conference center you, it's 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 common to find transformers actually inside the building so what we do is we we actually push 11 kilovolt or high voltage right into the middle of the building uh, and what that does is it makes it much more efficient as opposed to stepping down to 230 volts 400 volts on the outside and then having huge because the current remember what we said about the the current so having very very large cables because we're carrying very high current into the building why not put the transformer inside the middle of the building in a switch room um, and then distribute from there so heavy industry and large shopping centers and the like uh, will uh, will have their own into internal substations um, okay so that's a quick layout of the grid um, on there and again there'll be another there is another session on the on the national grid but this is just a quick overview of obviously what transformers are and where they're positioned okay so this is what a typical transformer looks like we have uh, this particular one it's air cooled because it's got radiators and the radiators are probably full of oil so you can see the drain at the bottom there for servicing um, so they're oil filled some are air air cooled depends on the size the load some are forced air so some are uh, obviously they have fans on there as well and how it's connected basically is if you look on the on the right here this transformer diagram you can see that on this side this is delta okay and you've got your three phases so l1 l2 l3 and this would be a high voltage so this could be 11 let's just say it could be 11 kilovolt on there this side this is your star 
and this will be 400 stroke 230 volts and that's what we're going to look at okay i can tell it's star because all of the if you look at uh, all the windings they're all commonly connected together there like a star okay now with a star what we do is we connect the center so the very center of the so the common point of the star it's known as the center of the star that is connected to earth which is zero volts and that's connected by big electrodes so transformers generally will have a, a big electrode uh, play a grid and that's really important because what that does is that sets the the middle of that transformer at uh, at zero volts okay so that would be zero volts there yeah and that's what that is doing there in the ground zero now you notice there's a neutral there n well that's because we actually take the neutral off the earth as well okay so on a what, what, what we call the neutral sorry rewind a bit what we look at with the earth so the earth is known as t for terra so terra is it's a french term for earth i believe yeah that's where i think it comes from so t is for terra so that's for earth n is the neutral so you might have heard things like T N S T N C S and T T. You will have heard of those. So obviously T N means that Earth and neutral are derived from the source center. T N and sorry the S means it's a separate Earth. T N C S means that the Earth neutral are combined and T T means obviously you've got electrode electrode again we've done that in another series so i don't want to focus on that really too much at the in this lesson um, but if you ever heard the terms tn tn means that the earth neutral are combined together at the source that's where it comes from so this is a, a bit more of a schematic now on what's going on so what we have here is you've got winding number we'll call that winding one two three okay so three windings exactly the same the same amount of turns uh, the same resistance because they're balanced it's all about keeping things balanced on a three phase supply and so you've got your phases there so you'd have l1 l2 l3 and this is known as the line voltage here so on a typical substation that would be 11,000 volts so if you get 11,000 volts on there like that And because the windings are connected across in delta the windings are connected across a line then that means that that would be 11 kilovolts across each winding in delta and we'll look at delta in, in a second so delta triangle okay in star a little bit different in star so what happens is we've got there's um because it's a transformer this it's like a tuning fork but this green is the iron core so these windings are linked by a magnetic flux so again push up on your trans transformer theory so a voltage is induced into the secondary winding which is the star so again we've got winding one two three so this will be step down okay so we're stepping down and what we'll have on this side is between line any line so l1 and neutral so l1 to neutral you get 230 volts that's known as phase voltage so between any any line you'll get 230 volts so you've got three 230 volt supplies yeah and you could use those supplies in a bigger building so you could have if it was a three-story uh, flat uh, sorry building with three flats 
you could have L1 serving one floor, L2 serving another floor, and L3. So that one supply there gives us three 230 volt separate supplies, which is very handy. Or you can have one 400 volt supply. So it's very, very common in large buildings or large installations to have all of this. So you'll have your 230 volt supplies for your sockets and your lights and your small loads and you'll have your 400 volt supplies for your heavy loads, your lifts, your, your uh, heating, ventilation equipment and possibly any big heating. So if it's commercial, you get three phase ovens, 400 volt ovens, 400 volt dishwashers, 400 volt grills. Um, but generally lighting is 230 volts. Uh, your sockets and your power, low power is 230 volts but your actual heavy stuff is 400 volts. So it gives us, the star gives us um, four types of supply. Okay. So what goes on with the Delta? Well, we've got our 11 kilovolt coming in here. So the current in a Delta, the current, as the current comes in, it splits. Okay, so that's the line current there. So the line, think of the transmission lines. So you've got L1, L2, L3. That's I line. And it's known as obviously I line, yeah? Or IL. And the current actually comes, comes through the line and as it comes into a delta, it's divided. So some of the current is split down one winding and down the other wind. It's Kirchhoff's current law. But because there's three supplies, so it, it's, it, it's actually split three ways. So if we call the current flowing in this, in these windings here, let's call that current I phase. All right, so these are the phase windings, yeah. I phase, so we've got I phase flowing in there. Okay, and I phase flowing. Because it's AC, we're going both directions, backwards and forwards. And we've got our line coming in. And the relationship is the line current is root three times the phase current. And root three is 1.732. So Problem to remember there. So if you want to work out the current that's flowing in the um, in the lines, sorry, in the phases, then you just simply divide the line uh, current by 1.5 root 3 to get I phase. So also I line over root 3 equals I phase, and vice versa. If you want to work out the uh, line current, then root 3 I phase. If you get my drift. But in delta because the windings are connected across in parallel the supply then the phase voltage equals the line voltage so that's what you've got to remember so that's quite an important statement is that so remember in delta the voltage across the supply is the voltage across each wind it's equal but the current splits okay star is the opposite because what you've got in star is basically the current is the same so as the current flows uh, obviously uh, out of a winding I've drawn it the wrong way so this is going to be delivering current yeah you can see that as the current comes through in series the current is the same through each winding so the current doesn't change but the voltage changes so if you were to look at, if I was to highlight this here, so if you look at the, the phase, so you can see that the line voltage there is shared between two windings. It's actually three windings. It's actually three, yeah. But you can see that across, across your line, it's going two, three ways, which is different to, uh, to delta. 
So, basically, in star, V line is root 3 times V phase. Okay, so that's your VP, V phase, that's your VL 400. Yeah, that's where it comes from. So between any line and neutral, you get 230, and between any line and line and line, you get 400. Okay, and remember, this is our TN supply here. So there's a T for Terra, that's our Earth, that goes down to our zero volts in the ground, and our neutral comes off there, like so. There's our neutral. Okay, and what you would also get on here as well is you would get the Earth would come off there, so um, which isn't shown in this diagram. So at the moment, there's no Earth going over to our, our supply, our, our uh, sorry, our consumer side. But if we, if there was an Earth, then it would come off there and it would go into the installation, and that would be the Earth there. And this would be because it's a separate Earth. That would be a T n separate tns so tn tn connected together then the earth is delivered into the installation separately that makes sense okay so in this example what we what we're going to do here is we're going to work out the line voltage flowing between the generator and the load we're going to work out the current in each phase of the load and we're going to work out uh, the impedance of the load so we have a star connected generator which is on the left which has a phase voltage of 238 volts so so we've got 238 volts coming out of the generator and we've got a line current of 65 amps flowing in the line. Okay. So the line voltage, so let's do the line voltage there. So that's which is VL. So VL, remember in star, we've got 238. So in star VL is root three times VP. So VL, is going to be that's 1.2 times 238 which gives us so that gives us 412.2 volts so that's so 412.2 now in delta that means then that the voltage across the load because in delta what we know is VL equals VP, and we know that IL is root 3 IP. So in delta, that means then now we've got 412.2 volts across each of those three loads because they're balanced. Okay. So the next thing we're going to work out is the current in each phase of the load. So obviously in delta, we know that the line current is 65. So IL is 65. So we need to rearrange this formula for IP. So make IP the subject. So IP is going to be IL over root 3. So that's going to be 65 divided by 1.732. And that gives us a current of 37.53 amps that's flowing down each phase of the load. So remember in delta, the line current, as it enters a junction, it is divided three ways. So each element there, each impedance or each element of the load is going to be, or each resistance of the load, should I say, I'm saying element because I'm assuming it's a heater. But each uh, resistor is going to be pulling 37.53 amps okay 
So the next part to work out is the impedance. So we've got A there. Always good to show you working out, be a tutor to mark. When I'm marking students' work, it's a lot easier. I can see you working out because I can see if you make any mistakes where you've gone wrong. And I think it also helps you to refresh your memory as well. So impedance Z, well in Z, obviously, so Ohm's law is basically uh, V phase over I phase. Okay, so obviously because it's delta, VP equals VL. So we're going to have 412.2 volts over 37.53 amps. So we work that two out. So let's just get the old, uh, old brain going. So I always like to use a calculator just for accuracy, really. <laughs> and we get an impedance of 10.98 ohms. So each one of those resistors in that delta is going to have a resistance of 10.98. And obviously, if that resistance drops downwards, if it goes lower, then the current's going to go higher. But we call it impedance because there is some impedance in the circuit. So in the transformer, you're going to get some reactants. So you're going to get X in the transformer. And you're going to get, obviously, uh, because it's AC, you've got resistive load there. So the two, that's why in AC we call it um, impedance as opposed to resistance. Okay. So if we look at the difference between delta and star connections, so we know we've got three wind, uh, three windings. Now this could be a motor, or it could be a transformer, but we'll we'll assume it's a motor because a motor obviously has windings. Yeah. So in delta, the actual voltage going through the winding is 400 volts, whereas in star, although we connect star to 400 volt supply, it's only 230 volts. So that affects the current flow, if you think about it, because it's to do with Ohm's law. The actual resistance of the windings won't change. But if we increase the current through, uh, sorry, if we increase the voltage across the windings, then proportionally the current will, will rise with that. Yeah. So what's the difference between delta and star? Well, effectively, the answer is just over half, 57.5%. So that means then that the difference between a star and delta is 0.575. So if you were to connect a motor in star first, so if a motor is connected in star, then the current flowing through the actual windings is 57.5% less than what it would be if it was connected in delta. So a, a star delta star to, uh, operates on the principle that we still like a gearbox really in a car is we connect it in star first and that effectively lowers the phase voltage to 230 volts and because the phase voltage is lower ohm's law the current is going to be lower as well it's going to be almost well just over half less so that's going to make things a lot easier for starting you're not going to get as big an inrush when you go on to delta when it moves to delta then the voltage lifts up to 400 volts which means the current almost doubles so you get a lot more power okay so the difference between the star and delta connection assuming uh, uh obviously it, the only thing that's that's common is the windings themselves connected in delta you have 57.5 percent more current than you would in star hope you find that useful thanks for watching